Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ren Se Yan. I'm coming from Emory, working with uh, Dr. Xiao Hu. Uh, thank you for providing me with uh, the opportunity to present our recent work, uh, enabling pre-shock state detection uh, using electrogram signals from uh, implantable cardioverter defibrillator. Uh, as you can see, uh, 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 this is uh, uh, the uh, process of how uh, uh, in, implantable cardioverter defibrillator uh, uh, device work. And we also call the device as an ICD device. It will keep an eye on our heartbeat beat and using signal called the electrogram signal. And uh, if the ICD uh, notice the heart is beating a uh, little way, it will send a shock to get the heart back to its normal rhythm. Yeah, however, uh, the IDCD device uh, will not always make decision correctly. This is because the decision algorithm uh, usually require a very high sensitivity. The high sensitivity will help the ICD not miss any cases requiring a shock. However, uh, there will be a lot of inappropriate shocks from the ICD device. And uh, uh, these inappropriate shocks will lead to various health uh, issues, including pain increase the risk of arrhythmias and anxiety. So to address this issue, we developed an innovative machine learning framework to identify the EGM segments, which suggests a potential shock. In this way, uh, our framework aims to classify EGM signals in one of two uh, classes, the normal healthy segments and uh, the segments which suggest a potential shock. As shown in this figure, our approach uh, will analyze signals uh, from before a shock, and, uh, which uh, we call uh, upstream uh, signals, and uh, from normal conditions, we, which we call uh, presenting signals. And uh, the method is crucial for predicting shocks using the signal in an early stage. In addition, in our study, uh, we only have a few patients with both upstream and presenting samples, and then the, pre uh, the upstream samples will vary in their lengths. So our framework uh, combines uh, the technology from metric learning, prototype learning, and a few short learning to solve these two challenges of imbalance uh, data set and uh, sequence with the varying lengths. And I will show how we use uh, the three types of uh, different uh, learning strategies to solve these two challenges. And as we can see from the slides, the results from our evaluation are very impressive, showing a high F1 score of uh, 0.87. And uh, this also verified the feasibility of predicting a pre shock conditions in an early stage. And the uh, I will uh, introduce the structure of our framework. And in general, our framework has two stage process, a learning phase mm -hmm. followed by an, inf uh, an inference phase. Uh, in the learning uh, stage, we utilize a CM neural network to employ the metric learning. The CM neural network will work measure the distance between signal embeddings and uh, uh, in the first step of uh, learning stage, uh, for the patients with both uh, upstream and present samples, we build a triplets. As we can see from this figure, uh, within one triplet, we have two different types of pairs, negative pair and uh, positive pairs. So, uh, and uh, for the uh, negative pair, uh, it uh, includes uh, one upstream uh, and uh, one present samples. And uh, the CM neural network will uh, be trained to uh, differentiate these two uh, different types of signals. And uh, for the positive pair, which includes uh, two present samples, and uh, the CM neural network will help to refine the similarity of these two uh, signals. I mean, the signals come from uh, the same categories. So uh, in this way, uh, we uh, overcome the challenge of imbalanced data set via uh, generating a lot of uh, pairs for the patients uh, with both upstream and uh, present samples. And, uh, and we build these pairs using samples come from the same person. This is because we want to mitigate 
the side effect, effects of other factors like gender and age via personalized modeling process. Uh, and, the, and we also have, have patients, a lot of patients with only prison samples, and this case is very common in health studies. And how do we uh, process the data uh, come from uh, such patients? And in our framework, uh, we extract a prison pairs from uh, patients with only uh, prison samples. And uh, we will uh, continue to refine uh, the uh, CRM neural network from the first phase, uh, which I refer as triplet network to continue to uh, learn and refine the similarity uh, from the prison pairs. And uh, here, we use LSTM as a core structure of the CRM neural network because this LSTM can process sequence with the different lists. Now we introduce the inference stage. And uh, in the inference stage, we first uh, process the EGM signals in two steps. In the first step, we apply the k-means method to the training embeddings to develop the prototypes for both upstream and prison categories. These prototypes then form the uh, base of our support sets in the future learning in next step. And uh, uh, this is uh, the process of how we utilize the future learning to uh, assign a final class for each input test samples. Here we uh, utilize uh, the support set uh, built based on the prototypes in the previous step. And uh, we compare the proximity of the test uh, samples uh, with, uh, the, uh, with, uh, with the uh, prototypes. And uh, we assign uh, the class of the prototypes uh, uh, if uh, the input test sample uh, is uh, ha uh, has uh, uh, the uh, the lowest uh, ha has the smallest distance with such prototypes. And uh, in this study, we gathered EGM uh, readings from a group of uh, three hundred and twenty six patients. And uh, uh, among these patients, uh, all all patients in, uh, have installed ICD devices. And uh, from this group. Uh, 93 patients provided uh, with EGM readings that show both normal uh, and uh, pressure conditions. And the rest, uh, uh, around, uh, around 200 patients only have normal EGM readings to share. And in total, uh, we uh, have a total of uh, more than 10,000 of normal EGM readings, while we only have uh, about 233 pre-shock readings. Uh, and this data shows considerable disparity in numbers between the normal and the pre-shock condi uh, pre conditions. Uh, and last, I will present uh, our uh, results. And uh, we evaluate our uh, uh, framework uh, based on the five-fold cross-validation. Here, we split the whole population into five, uh, five parts. And uh, in each iteration, we use uh, one fourth of pa patients' data for uh, evaluation for testing, and the rest will be used for training. And uh, we can see the first table analyzes the impact of including uh, patients with only presenting samples. Uh, here, like uh, we uh, use uh, LSTM, uh, or here, like we only use LSTM as a baseline model to compare with our framework. And uh, the second row. Is, uh, uh, is uh, a performance of model without using the patients with uh, only prison samples. And uh, the last uh, row is uh, uh, the results uh, using uh, uh, patients uh, uh, with uh, presenting, uh, with only uh, presenting signal pairs. And from uh, the table, we can see uh, our model uh, achieves uh, a much better performance than the uh, conventional LSTM models and uh, 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 with incorporating the patients with only presenting signal pairs and we can see an improvement. Uh, the second table offers uh, a comparison of two different approaches used to build the support set. 
And the first uh, uh, row indicates the results without using prototype learning. And uh, the second row indicates uh, uh, the performance uh, with building prototypes uh, for the future learning. And we can also see an improvement with the incorporation of the prototypes. Uh, that's all my results. Uh, thank you. Uh, any questions?